Welcome to a demonstration of what MPS can do. Press 1 for more details on MPS. Press 2 for the roadmap. Press 3 to speak to a developer. I guess you all have met voice menus before, right? That's why I chose voice menu as a domain to illustrate the fundamentals of MPS on. The domain is simple enough so that irrespective of your domain of expertise, you'll get an idea of what MPS can be used for. Yet, the solution is non-trivial and can be used as is in production. This tool took two junior developers without any prior knowledge of language engineering or MPS one month to build. I hope you'll enjoy this ride. Now what we got on the screen is a typical IDE from JetBrains. It looks just like all the other IDEs from JetBrains. You've got a panel on the left side that slides in and gives you overview of, your st of the structure of your project. You've got other panels at the bottom, on the right side, and they all hold some inf extra information or some extra tooling for your project. Back to voice menu. There are several systems out there which allow you to set up an automated phone menu that people interact with when they call in your company. The systems are configured using textual menu description files, like the one here. Quite cryptic syntax, I would say, especially if a non-IT person is supposed to define the structure of the menu. Guaranteed, the people in marketing or customer relationship departments have the knowledge, studies and statistics necessary to build efficient and targeted structure of a voice menu. But without an IT person, they can't move forward. This resembles the situation in many other domains, where you have domain experts with a domain-specific knowledge who have to explain their needs to developers, who then encode the knowledge in code in code like Java, C, XML or other formats, which look rather cryptic to the domain experts. Not only is the process of implementing individual requirements error-prone and painful, but the resulting code buries the domain knowledge deep in code, and so the implementation cannot be used by domain experts to recover the original business logic. What if we raise the level of abstraction so that the marketing people can define the voice menu themselves? This is what modeling tools are typically used for. So the developers no longer implement individual features or changes, but instead prepare a tool that can accommodate for a wide range of typical requirements of the domain experts and that generates the appropriate implementation automatically. I want to be more concrete now. So this is the tool for building voice menus that I started a short while ago. So that's a simple modeling tool that serves just one purpose, to build voice menus. On the left side, just like in all IDs from JetBrains, you see the structure of your project and you can create workspaces, basically definitions of voice menus. We already have one ready, so I'll focus on that one. I open it up in the editor. So now we see a structure of a simple voice menu, a hypothetical one. Now domain experts can directly interact with the code here and modify the structure of the voice menu. So you can just use keyboard to enter the various entries. And if you are familiar with uh, you know, the tooling, you can use various keyboard shortcuts that make, can make you very efficient. On the other hand, Occasional users or new users can benefit from the many visual clues that the IDE gives them, either directly in the editor or on the, on the side in these various helper panels. So now I can pick an option from here and create a new entry and then set up a new event. So what should happen when the user so what should happen when the user picks training from the voice menu? So again, either visually I can pick the right action to handle it, or I can do the usual control space things. So let's handle this, this with a direct call. The language also guards me so that I don't make too many mistakes. For example, if I create two entries with the same number, I get a domain-specific error message that tells me exactly what went wrong. 
Also, if you use a symbol that is not available on a phone keyboard, you get again a warning telling you what has just happened. And when the user, the domain expert, is done defining the menu, they can just save it, push to master, just like we do it with code. So you can have versioning uh, in a version control system. You can be using Git. You can publish your voice menus on GitHub if you like to. And obviously, you can hit the compile button to actually get your high-level language translated into the low-level language, the actual implementation. And this is done automatically by the tool. And it created this property file, which now I can upload to the server. And so the server will use a new version of voice menu, the one I've just created or modified. And well, this could potentially happen on a continuous integration server. I don't have to do it here myself, but it can be done on a continuous integration server following some process of verification and testing that I haven't broken anything in the voice menu. So what we have seen was a domain specific language that raised the level of abstraction to a level on which operate the typical people in charge of voice menus, the domain experts. They've got a dedicated descriptive syntax to use and, in addition, tooling that assists them, provides guidance and checks for mistakes. In principle, the domain experts use one or more languages to create models that describe their solution to a problem in the domain of expertise. A provided generator then automatically translates that model into the implementation domain a task that developers had to perform manually before, but now with MPS can be automated. Developers no longer implement the individual features of a voice menu, for example, but instead prepare the infrastructure for the domain experts to do this automatically. Now look at this. I told you, you can generate the implementation code from this. So in this case, property files that I can upload to the voice menu server. But not only that, I can do more. I can ask for generating XML. So now my voice menu has been generated into XML, no longer a property file, but an XML document that I can use for other purposes, maybe for deep code analysis or for another voice menu system that accepts this input instead of the property file that I showed you before or we can generate HTML. The HTML code will represent the structure of voice menu in a graphical way, so it will serve as documentation. So alongside generating the runnable artifacts, I can generate documentation and deploy that to some web server where people can always check the structure of voice menu. And this will never get out of date because it's generated at the same moment when I generate my implementation code. So you can imagine overnight a continuous integration server will generate the most up-to-date version of voice menu as well as documentation of voice menu. Deploy one to the voice menu server, deploy the other to the web server, the internal one probably, so that you always have documentation in sync with the real code. And here's one more, Java. I can generate Java code. That Java code, which looks like this, will actually allow me to simulate voice menu without uploading it to the server. So I can run it just locally as Java application and I get a simplified phone simulator. Thanks to a library for text to voice conversion, I can just have the phone speak to me and I can verify that the voice menu structure meets my, need, meets my needs. Welcome to JetBrains. For products, press 1. For technical support, press 2. For contact information, press Choose from this menu. For MPS, press 1. For development tools, press 2. For team tools, press 3. Do you know that JetBrains provides commercial support to MPS users? Choose from this menu. For description, press 1. For applicable domains, press 2. For roadmap, press 3. For technical support, press 4. You are not restricted to just one implementation that can be automatically generated from your models, but you can have more of them. 
Some of them can be really implementation, runnable implementation that are supposed to be used in production. But some generated artifacts can be used for documentation, for formal verification of correctness of your models, for simulation or code analysis. So to wrap it up, the voice menu application is a single purpose modeling tool. It provides high level abstraction to domain experts when creating their models and uses a generator to create the runnable artifacts as well as documentation and simulators. Where does MPS fit into the picture? Well, MPS is the technology that allowed the two junior developers to build this modeling tool in one month. With MPS, developers can create high-level languages as well as tooling for them with less effort. This lowers the cost of creating dedicated languages and the associated tooling. An increasing number of MPS users from domains like insurance, embedded software, legislation, medicine, data mining, and other would agree that this is really the case. Can you see an opportunity for using MPS on your project? Check out more details on our website. Thank you for watching.